going to start with the naked show. And I'm going to add a detail. What I'd like you guys to do is pair up with a partner. And when I give you a detail, I want you to take that detail. Add it. Everyone knows what naked show. Right? No, but I just did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pair you up with, with someone who can do the work with you, okay? But we're going to go slow. Because I'm going to add a detail, and I want you guys to rep it five times. And then I'll add another detail. We'll rep it five more times. Okay? Good. So, oh, when I start on back now, Right now our hips are at the same level, okay? I only connect my hips to his back if my hips are above his belt line. If I connect my hips to his belt line here, and he were to bridge, bridge, whoop, whoop. See how his head is coming? See how his head is now above me? I'm trying to choke something that's above me. That's more difficult. So if my hips are at the same level as his, a lot of people when they take back my hip, they screw in. I don't want that. I want a chest compression, but I need my hips away. That way, if you were to bridge, oh, look, the choke is right here. This is a comfortable position to choke from. If he's too high, oh, it's difficult. All right, so let's start with our hips a little ways away. We're going to let our partner bridge, and then we'll set a choke. Let's do that five times. Play jiu jitsu, um, it's, all, it's awesome, like, uh, it's like a chess match. And when it comes to a chess match, you're not just thinking about what you're doing, but you have to think about what your opponent is likely to do. And so you have to address their defenses before they can, can put them into action. So we're going to talk about the grips now. There's sort of two methods of thought when it comes to the grips. If I want to just maintain the back position on my partner, if I grab here, right, he's going to skate by starting to. What's he going to do first? Bump on his back. Do forward. He's going to break my grips, right? Most experienced guys go start attacking the grips to get out. They know that you want to choke them, so they're going to start isolating the hand. Now, if I leave the hands here, go ahead and attack the grips, it's fine. Right? I screwed up my grips already. He's already going to break it. But if I take my hands and I slide them into his armpit, now it's a little more difficult for him to reach it. Go ahead and get in there. So my grip, which is sort of the weak point that he wants to break open, I'm going to hide it so that he can't break it. Now, I could do that or I could set him up. So when I grip, the rule of thumb is that the hand that's in the armpit always goes on top. Because people are most likely to grab what's easiest to grab. So if I put my right hand on top and he grabs, just grab hold on. That leaves me with my left hand for the pull on grip. And I go it. What can I do with this hand? Nothing. Now, if I put the left the hand in the armpit on top, and he grabs my hand, he just pulls down that first hand. Oh, it leaves me with my choking hand free. I can still grab the shoulder, and now I finish. So when you're on the back, you either need to do one of two things. Either hide your grip, or the hand in the armpit should always go on top. Actually, do both. Even if it's in the armpit, always put that hand on top. Does that make sense? Have sense of control? All right, let's do that. That's that five repetition. The guy's not that good, but if you've ever heard of a guy named Chris Whiteman, uh, this next one's from him. So when you set your trope, one of the other ways that guys defend, and I saw, I went to the last fight out of there, I saw at least two guys escape the, the rear naked choke for this. They, the, they will attack the hand that's behind the head. Now you don't want the hand on top of the head because it's easier for them to pull down. So reach out and pull it down. You can't choke like that. So I hide the hand. But even then, I saw guys, they reach up, they grab that hand, they pull it down, and it's free. So here's the tip. You hide the hand behind the head, and then I lock my chin on top of it. Now that my chin is on top of that hand, go ahead and pull it out. Tell you what, I'll give you a dollar if you can pull it out. Two dollars. Three dollars. Four dollars. Two dollars. You guys don't understand. Three dollars is a lot of money for me. <laughs> All right? But so when you rip the chin, hide the hand behind the head and stick your chin on top of it. It's going to be like a locking mechanism that they can't pull that free hand out now. Now they're stuck. So let's do that. Add that detail. Knock it out five times. Especially me. Yeah? How much you curl? I'd say I curl 35. 35? <laughs> Why is everybody laughing when I say that? That's a lot more than me. All right, so you curl 35 pounds, right? You have any shoulder shrugs with there? How much do you do with a shoulder shrug? What would you say? What, what, what do I shrug? Probably eight, at least. <laughs> I mean, each hand. Probably one hand. I'm going to go with eight. Okay. <laughs> so a lot more. Yes. All right, so your shoulders are strong with your biceps. That's true for most people. 
So when you guys set the choke, it's okay to squeeze your biceps, but it's a smaller muscle group that'll wear out faster. It's not nearly as strong. So when I so when I get my choke set and sub and got my chin down, everything's in the right place. Instead of just squeezing on my biceps, I'm gonna use my shoulders, both shoulders, and a shoulder shrug to help set it. So I give them a little squeeze with the biceps, but I'm gonna use my shoulders to just do a little shoulder shrug. And that's way stronger. If you ever seen somebody's like grips burn out or they, they get tired and they lose the choke or they lose the, the arm lock or the attack, it's because they're using the wrong muscle group a lot of times. So once you set it, guys, when you set it, I want you to feel a difference. Do it a couple ways on your part so that you feel different. Squeeze, and then squeeze with a shoulder shrug. All right, let's add that detail. Let's do it five times. Make sure you give your partner the, show the partner your partner the difference though. I want you to feel the difference between the two. What? Where am I? Let's go over. Let's go down here. So one of the ways you see guys escape too, we're talking about how addressing the ways that our partner will defend against our back mountain, our, our chokes. Um, guys will almost always try to spin to face you. They're going to turn one way or the other. Now, the general rule of thumb for escaping a back now is that the hand reaching across is pointing the way out. So if I reach across with my right hand, my right hand's on top, he's going to try to put both shoulders on the mat on that side, right, and face me, and that's the way he's going to turn out and face me, right? So if I reach here and I let him turn that way, I'm in big trouble. Right? Go ahead and turn that way. Escape. Both shoulders. Both shoulders. Yeah, that's the correct way. We'll have to work on that. Yeah. Now, if he were to go the other way, go the other way, and put both shoulders on the mat, go ahead, go ahead, both shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work so well. Explode. So ideally, if my right hand is on top, I would like him, preferably, to be on my right. So I'm going to dump him not straight back, but to that side. I'll show you another, another cool reason why after this. And then I finish my choke from here. That will make it much more difficult for them to properly turn out. Not impossible, but tough. So let's do that five times. Dump them, dump them to the side of the hand. You can do, the funny thing about jujitsu is you can do everything right and still not win. That was, a, that was a tough lesson for me to learn. So I cannot make a mistake. I can do everything correct and I still lose. The other guy did more things correct. So even if you do all of these things that I've just shown you, the other guy, maybe because he's sweaty, or he's slippery, or he's fast, or he's nimble, or agile, or he's good looking, he escapes. So let's say I get everything right on it, right on top, I dump the quick side, and he still starts turning and he still twists out. Dang it! Now right, go back. So when that happens, I'm going to do my follow up. So when I go here, he starts turning into me anyways, I'm going to reach my hand under his head. And I pull the other hand out. Now I come up on all fours. I grab my bicep, just like I'm doing the, the Marco Leon, and I shrug my shoulders. And I finish him with the head and arm chair. See? So I switch my uh, rear naked choke, my Marco Leon, into a head and arm triangle. We'll go slow, right? Everything right, make everything right, make everything right. Oh, we're still getting out. The hand is in the armpit. I reach under his head, the other hand pulls. As long as my hand is on the mat, it's difficult for me to escape. I keep my head tight to him. Now when I'm ready, I grab my bicep, I squeeze, and shrug. Oh, you escaped my back now. Good job. Nice. Let's try it. I get my chin on my arm. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you something that helps me. Okay. I actually don't play. I do JF with help and Haiti because I don't actually, I don't ever play with two hooks in. Uh -huh. I just play with one hook. Right. I just play with one hook in and one hook out. I never play with two hooks. Yeah. Eddie Bravo would love me. And what that allows me to do is, if my right hook is in, uh -huh. my right hand is on top of this. Right. And what it allows me to do too, if I scoop my hips out, I'm going to reach my hand over the foot. Okay. And now I can set the choke easier. Oh, so I get a little extra of reach. If I'm centered on me and I have both hooks in, I can't quite reach around this far. Right. All right. So what I like to do is, Hands on bottom, control the arm, scoop. Now it allows me to reach a little deeper and finish here. Can you try that?